May the peace of the Lord be with you all, as we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Let us now listen to the Word of God. November 28, 2023, Tuesday of the 34th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Daniel said to Nebuchadnezzar, You, O king, saw, and behold, something like a great statue. This statue, which was great and high, stood exalted above you, and you considered how terrible it was. The head of this statue was of the finest gold, but the breast and the arms were of silver, and further on, the belly and the thighs were of brass, but the shins were of iron, a certain part of the feet were of iron and another part were of clay. And so you looked until a stone was broken off without hands from a mountain, and it struck the statue on its feet, which were of iron and clay, and it shattered them. Then the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold were crushed together and diminished like the ashes of a summer courtyard, and they were quickly taken away by the wind, and no place was found for them, but the stone that struck the statue became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream, we will also tell its interpretation before you, O king. You are a king among kings, and the God of heaven has given to you a kingdom, and fortitude, and power, and glory, and all the places wherein the sons of men, and the beasts of the field dwell. He has likewise given the flying creatures of the air into your hand, and he has placed all things under your realm. Therefore, you are the head of gold. And after you, another kingdom will rise up inferior to you of silver, and another third kingdom of brass, which will rule over the whole world. And the fourth kingdom will be like iron. Just as iron shatters and conquers all things, so will it shatter and crush all these. Furthermore, because you saw the feet and the toes to be part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom will be divided, but still, from the slip of iron it will take its origin, since you saw the iron mingled with the earthenware from clay. And as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay, part of the kingdom will be strong and part will be crushed. Yet, because you saw the iron mingled with pottery from the earth, they will indeed be combined together with the offspring of men, but they will not adhere to one another, just as iron cannot be mixed with earthenware. But in the days of those kingdoms, the God of heaven will inspire a kingdom that will never be destroyed, and his kingdom will not be handed over to another people, and it will crush and will consume all these kingdoms, and this kingdom itself will stand in eternity. In accordance with what you saw, because the stone was torn away from the mountain without hands, and it crushed the earthenware and the iron, and the brass, and the silver, and the gold, the great God has shown the king what will happen after this. And the dream is true, and its interpretation is faithful. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, Give glory and eternal praise to him. All you works of the Lord, bless the Lord, Praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. You angels of the Lord, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. You heavens, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. You waters that are above the heavens, bless the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. You powers of the Lord, bless the Lord, praise and exalt him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to him. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. And when some of them were talking about the temple, that it was adorned with excellent stones and gifts, he said, 
these things that you see, the days will come when there will not be left behind one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, Teacher, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign when these things are about to occur? And he said, Be cautious, lest you be deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. And when you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come immediately. Then he told them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, famines, and plagues in various places, fearful events and great signs from heaven will occur. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection How can we maintain trust in God during life's chaos and difficulties, believing that He can turn even our hardest times into something good? While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone, that will not be thrown down. Luke 21 verses 5 to 6 In a literal way, this prophecy of our Lord came true. In 70 AD, the temple upon which they were commenting was destroyed. After prophesying this, Jesus then goes on to warn the disciples that there will be many confusions that will come. There will be false prophets, wars and insurrections, powerful earthquakes, famines, plagues, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Why does Jesus prophesy all of these things? The answer was simple. He was not trying to scare them. He was not simply trying to satisfy their curiosity. Instead, he was warning them and preparing us all, so that we do not become misled or terrified when they come. He says, see that you not be deceived, and do not be terrified. As the old saying goes, life is not a bowl of cherries. While we live in this fallen world, chaos, confusion, deception, abuse, scandal, conflict and the like will be all around us. And when we do come face to face with any such difficulty, there is a temptation to fear, anger and despair be it family conflicts, civil unrest, or even divisions within the church itself, God wants us to remain at peace and to trust him always. Take Jesus' own life as an example. He was arrested, falsely accused, sentenced to death, and crucified. And through it all, he remained at peace, knowing that his suffering would become the very source of new life. God can use all things for good for those who love and serve Him. Reflect today upon the undeniable fact that your life will involve difficulty. Sometimes, that difficulty is self-imposed as a result of your sin, and sometimes, it is unjustly imposed on account of the sin of another. Truth be told, we should only be concerned about our own sin. If other challenges come your way that are out of your control, then use those challenges as opportunities to trust. Entrust all things to God, every suffering, every persecution, every tragedy, every struggle, everything. If God the Father could bring about the greatest good ever known through the brutal murder of his own divine Son, then he can certainly do the same with all that you offer to him in trust. Trust at all times and in all circumstances, and our all-powerful Lord will bring good from everything. Let us pray. My most powerful Lord, you warned us of the many hardships that would come our way before your glorious return. You did so to help prepare us and to strengthen us in those moments of testing. 
please give me the grace I need to always trust in you and to surrender over to you every cross I carry. I do believe, dear Lord, that you can bring good from everything, even those things that are most difficult in life. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to the readings and reflection of today's Mass. Please like, subscribe, and share with your family and friends. Again, thank you, and may God bless us all.